This year marked the 30th anniversary of three of the most important anime series to come out during the 1990s, Doug, The Red and Snappy Show, and Rugrats. The last one I mentioned would be the first of six Nicktoons, or seven if you count this thing, created by what started off as a mom and pop animation studio, then turned into a Californian powerhouse and then back into a mom and pop company. I'm of course talking about Kwaski Chupo. Today I won't be discussing the rise and fall of this once dominant studio, save that story for either one of these guys, but rather the saying that this company seems to be just as popular for as their animated creations, at least here on YouTube, their Wogos. Yes, for some reason, the Kwaski Chupo Wogos, especially the 1998 one, are huge celebrities here in this niche little community, spawning so many remixes to the point where even the company itself acknowledged this craze. So, thanks to the mild success of my Sony Pictures Home Entertainment ranking, as well as your votes, I'll be reviewing every Kwaski Chupo Wogo ever which happens to be just four, not counting sub-variants, and they'll be ranked from worst to best. Okay, enough introduction, let the ranking commence. That's it? Yes, Patsy, that is indeed it. Underwhelming, I know. Okay, to quickly establish context, Kwaski Chupo, after a number of years hibernating, to put it lightly, tried to make a comeback in 2012. However, the so-called comeback doesn't necessarily mean they're creating more Nicktoons or anything, although they do have a little involvement with the Rugrats reboot now on Paramount+. Plus. But these days, they've mostly been making some webcomic that was basically rocket power but with zombies, and capitalizing on the popularity of their now official mascot, now formerly known as RoboSplat, or just Splat, by giving him his own web series on Facebook and YouTube. By the way, that web series is actually pretty funny, despite the cheap animation quality. If you were to watch just one episode, definitely the first one, where Splat comments on YouTubers obsessing with him. But going into this logo here, there really isn't that much I can say. It looks like it was animated within a maximum of two minutes in After Effects, and Honestly, I think it's a metaphor for the current state Klaski Chupo itself is in. Their preceding three logos may have been more surreal, but they themselves could also be considered metaphors for how Klaski Chupo was this prominent studio that can pump out as much content in no time, while simultaneously carrying a weird looking yet somewhat charming animation style to be recognized by. With this placeholder on the other hand, all it's saying is, yep. That's us, Kwaski Chupo. You're probably wondering how we were reduced from dominating TV animation to making cheaply animated web videos about our scary face, with the occasional duties of providing audio recording services for these clients. Basically, Vicom. Enough said. All of that being said, it's obvious why this logo is at the bottom spot. But we're not done talking about Splat just yet. <laughs> yep, there he is, in all his original glory. Strap yourselves in for quite a ride, folks, cause I got a lot to say. Firstly, let me just get this out of the way right now. This logo is not scary. I never found it to be scary. Weird looking? Damn right. A little annoying? Perhaps. Nightmare inducing? Hell no! In general, all of the big five scary Wogos' so-called scare factors are blown way out of proportion in my opinion. Only the vid BND whatever mask comes close to being legitimately startling, and even then it's more melodramatic than anything. <laughs> Also, there's this super widescreen version of the Splat logo seen at the end of the Wild Thornberry's movie that's been said to be even scarier, but to me, it just feels slightly cheaper. Although, I'd be lying if I said I can't see why some people would be 
unironically scarred by Splat. Like, it'd especially be bad enough if you were already disturbed by some of the moments in Klatsky Chubo's cartoons themselves, let alone their weird, big-headed, beady-eyed, Eastern European-inspired, whips swooping down to the bottom of their chins trademark art style. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's this giant, black and purple, ink black creature that looks like a grotesque rendition of Spongebob Squarepants, popping up sounding Quasky Chupo, which by the way should have prevented all of the mispronunciation of their name, and concluding with a trio of random cartoon sound effects that barely had any reason to be heard once the logo has been fully formed. Oh, and speaking of Spongebob, there's no way I can resist mentioning the multiple times Splat used to erroneously appear at the end of the Season 3 episode containing Wet Painters and Krusty Krab training video. If this infamous error isn't the cherry to top people's exaggerated claims about Quatsky Chupo Nicktoon's supposedly oversaturated Nickelodeon schedule during the late 1990s and early 2000s, I don't know what is. Oh yeah, and history actually repeated itself when the same thing happened many years later when Hey Arnold and Rocco's Modern Wife aired on the splat. I, I, I don't even know. Okay, enough ranting. Like I said, this vocal is more of a nuisance than a threat. Even then, I find myself feeling more amused than genuinely annoyed with it. It's such a ridiculous thingy that it's admirable, but what's just as admirable is the deeper meaning behind Splat's existence. Apparently, from what I read on Splat's Facebook page, the 1998 logo could be seen as a little rags to riches story of how Arwen Kwaski and Gabor Chupo went from working with whatever scraps they had in their studio apartment to building an animation empire with several great and successful productions under their belt. That is a good backstory for such a popular logo. Two more things about Splat before we move on to the last two logos on this list. One, as I mentioned in my video about the Rugrats reboot, Gabor announced the return of the logo's alternate variant with some brand new glitchy effects through his YouTube channel, and now is scaring the crap out of a new generation of kids watching the CGI dumb babies. And two, this is by far the most hilarious thing I found out about this thing. So for some godforsaken reason, when As Told by Ginger airs in Russia, and yes, it happens on Ginger specifically and no other Klasky Chubo so as far as I'm concerned, the vocal is dubbed over by a possibly drunk guy with the original audio still intact. <laughs> but wait, here's the funniest part. This guy gets to re-record his gibberish each time. <laughs> Seriously! <laughs> Boy, I wonder what his salary must have been if his only job is to walk up to the microphone and ramble. Quasky super. <laughs> I'll share a link in the description to a compilation of nearly every single Russian dub of Splat, with varying levels of energy, mind you. Bottom line, while it may have appropriately debuted on a Ronald McDonald VHS titled Scared Silly, Splat's own scare factor is overrated. However, his charm and eccentricity is almost unquestionable. He is an icon of the Bogo community, whether we love him or not. Again, it's okay if you're unnerved by this thing. Me, on the other hand, I'll just continue remembering that there are more disturbing stuff to come out of Kwaski Chupo. Case in point, this gargoyle. Alright, alright, I know, I know, that was too easy. And you know what, calling her a gargoyle is an insult to both these guys, and even these guys. Whew, that was a mouthful. As we made it halfway into the list, I'd like to give you all a friendly reminder to like this video if you're enjoying it so far, and subscribe to this channel because a bigger amount of my total viewership comes from those not subscribed. Please help balance this out. Thanks. Okay, let's move on to the top two. What a wicked logo this is. For those who grew up with the classic seasons of Rugrats, 
as well as ah, uh, real monsters, Duckman, or maybe even those Edith Ann specials that exist apparently. This inaugural Kwaski Chupo and tag should be a familiar face. Bearing the graffiti nickname for a reason, a whole bunch of random crap is messed together to form a super energetic, colorful logo that, much like the others, coincides with the studio's bizarre animation style as seen in their souls and other projects. I don't know for sure if it will sit well with epileptic viewers, but the logo's wackiness obviously moves at a roadrunner's pace, as we quickly pan across different shapes and boxes spelling out Kwaski, an invisible crayon scribble and chupo, and finally zooming out as the logo's color saturation is turned down while the weather Y turns purple for some reason. All of this is happening against a background that's also on some serious caffeine, by the way. Even the CLG wiki admits that the music alone is a little tough to describe. The instruments include synthesized bass, drums, keyboard, and a smorgasbord of sound effects that somehow managed to successfully mix together into a catchy tune. Mark Mothersbaugh, who's done the music for almost the entire Rugrats franchise, was rumored to be the composer of this Kwaski Chupa Wogos theme. Considering that soul's distinctive, honestly hard to describe soundtrack, I wouldn't be surprised if it's true. No furry sub variants include the vocal playing at a 5% speed increase, as seen on Duckman and the Edith Ann specials. <laughs> A certain version seen on the rather depressing series Stressed Eric, where everything is completed while the background still dances. And a couple of in credit variants found on the 1989 music video for Beastie Boys Sad Rass and the 1990 HBO special based on the book Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. The CLG wiki states that the Beastie Boys video was where this Kwaski Chuba logo made its debut. However, they worded it in a way that confusingly left me questioning if the actual animated logo appeared after the music video's credits in addition to the in-credit variant. Presumably, they might have been merely referring to the in-credit logo, whereas the real thing debuted on the premiere of Rugrats. After all, if the animated logo made its first public appearance in 1989, then it should have appeared in the unaired Rugrats pilot from 1990s, shouldn't it? Anyway, who cares? This thing here is a quintessential Kwaski Chupa logo. Yet, there's some things about our final entry that left me ranking it number one. Since there are no logos left in the realm of Kwaski Chupo to consider an honorable mention, let's go straight to the list's conclusion with the following masterpiece. <laughs> Okay, before I go on about how this logo is an underrated gem that deserved much better, not unlike a certain one of Kwaski Chupo's Nicktoons, might I add, I'll answer what you may be asking. Why this over the graffiti and first splat logos? Starting off with the obvious, the animation is a big old step up from the previous two, with the smooth sunrise, elaborately stylized buildings, exceptional stage of the rooster and city skywine, and 3D motion graphics of the grungy Kwaski Chupo weathers flying about before culminating together at the end. Also, the wild rooster himself is a funny, ugly, cute little creature. Secondly, the concept is admirable in the sense that much like the spot logo, it could be interpreted as a metaphor for the status of the Kwaski Chupo studio itself. At this point in time, they were still a dominant provider of animation in the West Coast United States, with a few Nicktoons under their belt, as well as several pilots and commercials being animated too. The rooster standing above this California-like city while crowed in the early morning is basically Kwaski Chupo selling out said prominence to the whole city of Los Angeles if not the entire country. Too bad it could also be seen as a little sad in hindsight, considering the studio's current diminished state, where they're mainly using this as their measly logo now. Oh yeah, and the techno music here is catchy and fitting as well. So why do I find the Kwaski Chupo Rooster to be an underrated gem? Remember how I felt about the RCA Columbia Pictures International video logo from the late 80s? Well, this Kwaski Chupo Rooster logo, 
while similarly underrated, feels like an inverse of that. While the RCA Columbia International logo has simple graphics redeemed by amazing music and a decent lifespan of 4 to 6 years, the Rooster had the best artistry out of its peers, yet it was severely underused. The logo was only properly used in two productions, Rugrats Go Wild in 2003 and Immigrants in 2008. Though if you throw in its inclusion in the two demo reels from Klatsky Chubo made between 2007 and 2018, as seen on YouTube, that'll leave you with a grand total of four appearances by this logo, versus the hundreds of times the other two were shown. Obviously what I'm getting at is that this is rather unfortunate. A well-made logo like this doesn't deserve such limited exposure, especially if said exposure only amounts to a crossover movie that most people find cringy and unnecessary, an obscure film that's just episodes of an unaired Spike TV cartoon strung together, and a pair of demo reels on YouTube, one of which that you could either view as awesome because of how it highlights the studio's diverse output within its first 25 years, or borderline depressing because of how it highlights all of those pilots that went absolutely nowhere following complications with Vicom. It makes you wonder what was the point of creating this logo if it's not going to be used to its full advantage. I remember SC Media Works doing a video in 2017 counting down his picks for wasted logos, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Incredible looking logos that had the potential of being iconic, but ultimately they ended up very short with, thus its potential was wasted. That's how I feel about this rooster over here. Sure, it may be less colorful than the 1991 variant, and less off the wall memorable than Splat. The rooster is nonetheless a powerful being, albeit one who was taken for granted. It's both fun to roll myself into, and not to mention it was a fun logo to recreate and fittingly start off Classic Logo Remake Party 4 with. It's quite the underrated jam, I swear. And there you have it, all four primary Classic Chupa logos ranked. I know this video took longer than I would have liked to come out, but I hope it was worth the wait regardless. Do you agree with my ranking? If not, feel free to share your own ranking of the Klatsky Chuba logos down in the comments. Plus, if you'd like to see more uh, logo rankings like this, please leave me your suggestions for other logos to tackle. Also, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more logo stuff, and show your support for my work however you can, whether it be buying my merch or a simple donation. I'd really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, fellow logo fanatics.